I'm an Airbnb super host in the top 5% of listings, and even I'm not making money right now. And I provide an exceptional guest experience. I have super high quality listing photos and content. I use dynamic pricing software to optimize my rates for maximum revenue. I even locked in my mortgage at a low 3% interest rate. So how am I not profitable? And if I'm not profitable in the top 5% of short-term rentals on Airbnb, how bad is it for other hosts right now? Now, I know there's nobody out there that's shedding a tear for us hosts, and some of you might even be celebrating. I get it. Between the high Airbnb fees and some hosts asking guests to clean after charging a cleaning fee, I'd be irritated too. And then there's the lack of affordable housing across the country. We're being blamed for that too. So if hosts aren't making money on Airbnb anymore, does that mean that we're all going to give up and sell our properties or convert them to long-term rentals? And does that mean that houses will become more affordable and rents will be going down? I'm covering all this as well as my advice to those thinking about starting an Airbnb business today. So let's get into it. First off, how did we get here? Why are so many hosts now losing money? Well, up until 2020, the supply of short-term rentals was growing at a reasonable pace that kept up with the demand from guests. But then, travel in general completely dried up at the beginning of the pandemic and created a lot of pent-up demand for vacations. When things started to open up again, people didn't want to stay on top of each other at hotels and they didn't want to fly, so they opted to rent single-family homes at destinations that were within driving distance. So throughout 2021, Airbnb hosts were raking in money hand over fist with all the unusual demand. I couldn't help but notice how much money these hosts seem to be making. And I saw a business opportunity. The problem is, so did everyone else. According to AirDNA, the number of short-term rentals in the US is set to reach 1.75 million in 2024. That's up an insane 66% from the 1 million listings that were available in 2020. On the flip side, demand for short-term rentals in the last few years hasn't grown nearly as fast as the supply, so now we're seeing the highest vacancy levels in the last decade. Basically, too many of us got into the hospitality game after 2020, and now we're facing the consequences of oversaturation. I think it's fair to say that most people recognize that there's an oversupply of short-term rentals. But that's not what's eating away at my business. Despite the oversupply, I'm still outperforming my competition in terms of revenue and occupancy. In fact, my cabin in Lake Tahoe, California is still bringing in $8,500 a month in revenue. That's $102,000 a year. The biggest challenge that I'm facing, and I'm sure many other hosts are too, are the high cost of expenses that are unique to short-term rentals. When I initially evaluated building a cabin to rent out as an investment option, I grossly underestimated how much it would cost to own and operate. Here on YouTube, Airbnb evangelists always focus on how short-term rentals have higher revenue potential than long-term rentals. And they're right, you can make a lot more revenue each month by renting out short-term. But what those same Airbnb gurus gloss over are all the additional expenses that are unique to short-term rentals. First off, most cities or counties across the country charge a transient occupancy tax if you're operating a short-term rental. This TOT tax is typically between 10 and 15% of your bookings, which is significant, especially when landlords don't have to pay TOT on long-term rentals. In my case, the county in Lake Tahoe collects 12% of my revenue, which works out to $1,020 a month. Next is the platform fee. Airbnb charges hosts 3% for each stay. So for me, that's $255 a month. Also keep in mind that Airbnb indirectly eats into host revenue by charging guests an additional 14% of the booking value. The next thing to note is that operating an Airbnb is not passive. So many hosts offload at least some portion of the work to a property manager. This can cost another 10 to 30% depending on the quality and scope of responsibilities. In my case, I pay $800 a month to my local property manager to take care of the property, to inspect before and after each guest, and to manage the cleaners. Speaking of cleaners, the good ones keep getting more and more expensive. On average, I pay my cleaners $300 per stay. I know that sounds crazy, but Tahoe has a super high cost of living and that's just how much it costs to clean a 2,500 square foot cabin. So in total, I pay about $1,200 a month for cleaning. Another expense that's unique to short-term rentals is that hosts pay for all utilities. That includes everything from electric to internet. And let me tell you, when renters aren't paying for utilities, 
they crank that AC. My utilities average about $500 a month. Short-term rentals also have consumables that you have to restock, and that average is about $100 a month. And finally, there are several yearly fees that are specific to short-term rentals. In my area of Lake Tahoe, there's a short-term rental permit I have to renew each year, and that's about $350. I also have to pay $150 for a fire inspection, another $150 for a water backflow inspection, and a snow removal contract for the winter that costs about $1,200. All those yearly fees work out to about $163 a month. So we haven't even gotten to my mortgage, property taxes, and insurance, and all of these expenses that are specific to short-term rentals already add up to $4,038. That's $4,000 that I would not be paying if I was operating my same property as a long-term rental. And this is a side note, but keep in mind that there's another cost that's unique to short-term rentals that I didn't include in the month expenses, and that's furnishing, which can be another fifteen dollars to $25,000 depending on the size of your property. As far as my basic expenses go, I built my cabin for about a million dollars and locked in my mortgage at a 3% interest rate in 2021, so my monthly mortgage payment is $4,900. My property taxes are another $1,500 a month, and insurance these days is getting out of control at $400 a month. Together, my basic expenses are $6,000 $1,800 a month, and that's roughly what my total expenses would be with a long-term rental. So if we add up all of my expenses and subtract them from my $8,500 in revenue, I'm losing $2,338 a month as a host in the top 5% of Airbnb listings. I am paying down the principal on my mortgage, and I am taking advantage of some tax deductions, so at the end of the year, I'm pretty much breaking even. I know right off the bat, some people are gonna say that I'm just paying too much for cleaning and property management, but even if I completely eliminated those expenses by doing all the work myself, I would still be $338 in the hole every month. Mind you, I can see in my pricing size software that I have double the occupancy and a higher average nightly rate than my competition. So I can only imagine how much money the average host in my area is losing right now. So what does this all mean? Well, the oversupply of short-term rentals is forcing hosts in my area to do two things both of which are great for guests. The first thing that oversaturation is doing is driving hosts to improve their guest experience and the overall value in terms of the amenities that they provide. The second thing it's doing is forcing hosts to lower their nightly rates. This is great for travelers in the short term since you can find some pretty great deals right now, but a race to the bottom in terms of pricing is not a sustainable practice for STR owners. Eventually, a portion of hosts, especially new hosts that are locked into expensive financing, will be forced to either go out of business or at least change their business model because they won't be able to pay their expenses. That means we probably will see some short-term rentals convert into long-term rentals, but since short-term rentals only account for 1% of the housing supply, I wouldn't expect it to have much of an effect on long-term rents. The same goes for the supply of affordable housing. Don't expect housing prices to go down significantly because like I said, only about 1% of the housing supply is actually short-term rentals. Most metro areas where affordable housing is a major issue have actually already banned Airbnb. So the lack of housing in those areas will remain until cities solve the root of the issue which is to make it easier and cheaper to build new housing. And in destination locations like mine in Lake Tahoe, where a higher percentage of the housing supply is made up of short-term rentals, most of the homes are vacation properties for rich people. So they aren't likely to sell or convert their properties into long-term rentals because they use it throughout the year. Eventually, over the next few years, I expect supply and demand for short-term rentals to stabilize. Hosts that are currently providing the best value to guests and haven't over-leveraged themselves with expensive debt will weather the current Airbnb bust. But there will be some casualties along the way. The speculative hosts that jumped into Airbnb hoping for an easy buck while over leveraging debt will have to quit because they're gonna continue to lose money. Overall, I think the outcome will be great for guests and overall communities because only the best hosts will remain in business. So what's my advice to those thinking about buying a property and starting an Airbnb business today? My short answer is don't do it.
unless your property meets one of these two criteria. One is that the property would still cash flow even if you had to convert it into a long-term rental. If you stick to this rule, you'll keep yourself out of financial trouble if for some reason you aren't able to operate as a short-term rental. The second case where I think it's okay to invest in a short-term rental is if your primary objective is to have a vacation home for yourself and you wanna be able to offset some of the costs by renting it out on Airbnb. Mortgage rates and real estate prices and super high expenses are making it too challenging to make a profit right now. I'm not saying this because I don't want more competition. It's just the reality. You saw my example. I have a low 3% interest rate and $500,000 in home equity, and even I can't cash flow right now. If despite everything, you still wanna start a short-term rental, at least do thorough research into every single expense that you're likely to have in your area so that you won't be surprised later on. Also, I would not invest in an Airbnb in a metro area because the risk of new regulations that ban short-term rentals in urban areas is way too high. Another piece of advice is don't get into risky financing. If you can't qualify for a standard mortgage at market interest rates, then that's a sign that you can't afford to take this risk. My next piece of advice is don't follow trends. If an Airbnb guru with hundreds of thousands of followers is saying how great a particular market is for Airbnb right now, don't be surprised if it's oversaturated a year from now. And speaking of trends, if you think that you'll always be able to fall back on midterm rentals to travel nurses or construction workers, don't make your entire business dependent on one small segment of the population that could go away at any moment. So what am I gonna do with my property? Well. I've actually achieved my original goal with this investment. First of all, one of the major reasons I built my cabin in Tahoe is so that my family and I can use it on a monthly basis. So I'm okay if I'm not quite breaking even, especially when I'm still enjoying the appreciation and home value over time. Obviously, it would be nice to have some cash flow, so I'm seriously looking at some new strategies like direct bookings through my own website to incentivize guests that are looking to avoid that 14% Airbnb fee. I'm also looking for some less expensive cleaners, but to be honest, honest, the cost of living in Tahoe is just so high that I don't think it's realistic. I'm going to be adding some new amenities that will further differentiate me over my competition and win more bookings. I am exploring the potential of converting my cabin to a long-term rental, but that kind of defeats the original purpose of me having a vacation home for my family, so I probably won't go that route unless I really need to cut down on my expenses at some point. There's been a lot of doom and gloom in this video, but I really want to mention that I actually I actually love being a host. I love doing the design and the setup, the marketing, the revenue management, even the guest interaction. I'm constantly improving the overall guest experience in response to feedback, and it's been really rewarding to provide memorable experiences for my guests. If you'd still like to get started on Airbnb, despite everything in this video, then you can sign up with my Airbnb affiliate link in the description. We both get some money when you sign up, and I'll help you get your listing off to a great start. So I'm definitely not giving up on my short-term rental. I'm still in my first year of hosting, and I believe I can capture more market share over the next 12 months by providing more value than my competition. I strongly believe that those of us hosts that make it through this period of oversaturation will be rewarded after the market corrects and all the subpar operators are forced to go out of business. I'll keep you guys posted if anything changes. Until then, watch this video about whether real estate or stocks are the better investment.